And if you're wondering why I'm using this piece of shit right here, um, can't find my other Hagoromo chike. I don't know where I put it a second ago. I'm so confused, mate. Diagonalize <laughs> Papa Flamby's Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another episode of the Advent Calendar. And we are going to do some more linear algebra today. Okay, um, maybe this is the first time linear algebra in the advent calendar. I don't know. Last year we have gotten ourselves a function and we tried to make this function into a recursive formula. This is what we arrived at. And today I would like to use linear algebra to get our final result back, our function with respect to n. Okay, so our explicit recursive definition of this recurrence relation, this difference equation. And we are going to dive right in. So, link in the description to Papa Fibonacci. I have done it back then. You are going to be confronted with this yet again in the advent calendar at some point. Also, we had initial values given. So what we did with our Papa Fibonacci back then was simply we tried to get ourselves the transformation matrix. Meaning, to this statement, we added a true statement, gn is equal to gn. So if you have three apples, then you have three apples. It does make perfect sense, hopefully, to you, okay? Then we were putting this into vector notation. We have a system of equations, so we can use linear algebra. And we ended up with this thing right here. Also, what you can notice here is, so let's start this way. More formally, you can find the transformation matrix, so the linear mapping using simply a change of basis. Okay, you are going to plug the basis vectors into here and you are going to end up with a certain transformation matrix. But right here you can see at a glance what the transformation matrix actually is. So this thing right here is basically nothing other than some matrix multiplied together with the vector gn, gn minus one. Because if you multiply a two by one vector with a two by two matrix, you're going to end up with a two by one vector. Okay, but now you might ask yourself, well, we don't have a gn minus one down here. Well, we actually do plus zero gn minus one. So if you don't have any apple, then you don't have any apple. Okay, it does make sense. Meaning our coefficients for our transformation matrix are actually three, negative two, one, and zero. And if you're wondering why I'm using this piece of shit right here, um, can't find my other Hagoromo chike. I don't know where I put it a second ago. I'm so confused, mate. Now, this is what we have right now. We are going to call this thing right here, okay? I don't know Q because it's cool, okay? Be because the word cool starts with Q, Q. <laughs> now, this is a recurrence relation. And what we can do is we can actually make a change of index. So let n go to n minus one, then we would end up with q times g n minus one, g n minus two. And we can do this n iterations, plug all of those new recurrence definitions in to get to our initial value problem with the vector g one, g naught at the end. Meaning to get there, we have to do n iterations. n minus n is going to result in zero. Okay, I hope this does make sense. So after doing n iterations, we are going to end up with q to the nth power, and then g1, g0, which is nothing other than 3 and 2. And we can actually solve our recurrence relation by diagonalizing. What a weird fucking word, I hate to say it. By diagonalizing, diagonalizing, diagonalizing. Our cue. Okay, I, I hope you get the point right here. Meaning, what you basically want to do is you want to express our q as s times t times the inverse of s. s is just a tuple okay, of our eigenvectors that we are going to find out, and t is just the identity matrix kind of with our eigenvalues plugged in. At first we are going to find out our eigenvalues, meaning we are going to solve the characteristic polynomial in q. I'm going to write it out, this is going to result in q minus the eigenvalues times the two by two identity matrix taking the determinant and you want this to be equal to zero. Meaning, we are going to end up with three minus lambda, then negative two, one, and negative lambda. Okay, we, we have all done complex numbers, but different up until this point, okay, coolio. We know how to deal with stuff like this. Now, multiplying those together, taking the determinant is going to leave us with lambda squared, and then negative three lambda, and then negative and negative becomes 
positive. So um, positive two. Exactly. Okay, now we want this to be equal to zero, meaning we can actually solve this using the quadratic formula. Lambda one and two, our two eigenvalues are going to be um, negative three over two, no positive, plus minus the square root of, we are going to end up with, um, okay, this is going to give us nine over four, and then minus two, meaning, we are going to expand this fraction. This is going to result in eight over four, meaning we are going to have one quarter taking the square root of that is going to result in three over two plus minus one half. Now we can add and subtract stuff. So our first eigenvalue is going to result in um, two and our second eigenvalue is actually nothing other than one. Okay, I haven't done this problem in a while. I have to think about everything. I, I haven't done this in months, but I know the procedure, so it should be um, fine, everything. Now we can actually find our eigenvectors, okay? And you see the algebraic multiplicity is one on both of those, so our geometric multiplicity has to be one, okay? Or well, otherwise it's not diagonalizable, but we have an explicit formula. I know that, so it's going to be diagonalizable, meaning we are going to solve the system. Q minus lambda one times the uh, identity matrix, this is our vector x and y, for example, being equal to the null vector, meaning we are going to end up with a system of equations. Now, two is our first eigenvalue, so this is going to result in one, negative two, one, and negative two times x, y vector. They are both the same, basically, so we're going to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to put it in here. So one x minus two y is equal to zero, and we have x minus two y is equal to zero meaning we have one free parameter. Let's choose y to be equal to some t out of the real numbers. This is going to make up our eigenspace, but it really doesn't quite matter. We, we can choose any all real numbers, so let's choose one, for example. Let y be equal to one, meaning we are going to end up with x being equal to two, meaning our first eigenvector, v1, is thus nothing other than two and one. Now we can go through the same procedure with our Second eigenvalue, okay, v2, we want to find it out. Okay, this thing right here is really important. We are going to end up with a system of equations. What happens if we plug the second eigenvalue in? This is going to result in a one. So this is two, negative two, one, and one times xy is going to result in two x minus two y being equal to zero. And we also have uh, x minus y is equal to zero. Meaning overall, we can divide both sides by two. Okay, it's not equal to zero um, because it's the successor of one and thus by definition not equal to zero. We are going to parameterize yet again something, let y be equal to one. And thus we have x being equal to y by the system of equations. So x and y are both um, one, meaning overall that our second eigenvector, which is also important, is going to result in one, one. Like I said before, our s is going to be the tuple of v1 and v2. Overall, we are just going to plug our vectors in, our column vectors, so this is two, one, one. If you were to find the inverse of this thing, it's one over the determinant, meaning two minus one is going to be one over one is one, and then interchanging those, one and two, negative one and negative one. This is just how it works out, mate. Our t, like I said before, is thus just um, the, the matrix with our eigenvalues on the main diagonal. So this is two, zero, zero, one. Also, one thing that I want you guys to notice is, I have done this in the Fibonacci video, go take a look at that. If we want to find out q to the nth power, this is what we want to have. This is the same as s times t to the nth power times s minus one. This simply stems from the fact that this is s times t times s to the negative one times s times t times s to the negative one, blah, blah, blah. n times exactly s and s minus one multiplied together are going to end up being just the identity. So we are going to have s times t times t times t, blah, 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 n times, so s times t to the nth power times s inverse. This is just how it is. Meaning, if we were to take the nth power of our t, this is quite easy to compute because it's a um, diagonal matrix, meaning we are simply going to put them here n times. 
on there. So simple matrix multiplication. So if you have t squared, this is going to be 4, 0, 0, and then 1 yet again. Okay, 1 to the nth power is simply 1. Meaning overall, q to the nth power is thus nothing other than, okay, we are going to have 2, 1, 1, and then 2 to the nth power, 0, 0, 1. And also we are going to have uh, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and 2. And now we are basically done because all we have to do is multiply q to the nth power by 3, 2. Okay, by the vector 3, 2. Same spiel here. Multiply everything out and, and then we are done. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to multiply those together. This is 3 minus 2 is going to result in 1. So 2, 1, 1. 2 to the nth power 0, 0, 1. And then I said 1. And then we have negative 3 plus 4 is also 1. This is going to keep everything how it is basically. So this is 2, 1, 1, 1. We're going to put it on here. So 2 to the nth power and then 1. Once again, multiplying stuff together is going to result in 2 to the n plus 1 power plus 1. And down here, 2 to the nth power plus 1. And I want you guys to notice this is also equal to gn plus 1 and gn. And to vectors or to matrices are exactly equal if and only if their dimensions are equal and their entries are equal. Meaning we have a formula for our gn which is going to be 2 to the nth power plus 1. And this is what we had. This right here was our function that we had last year as a given. And then we found out the recursive formula doing some natural log action. I think guys are watching if you didn't enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, subscribe my comment channel. If you like, don't forget to buy those teachers. I grade 10 to 15% of everything over the whole course of the December. And yeah, don't forget to share those videos to your friends, family, to your dead dog or your little sister, okay? Now until next video, have a fun below. Ciao. Voll die Bloggerschlampe, ey. <lacht>